everybody, I'm Flora and you are watching another episode of Hey Flora. And it's been a good while since I've actually made a Hey Flora episode, so I'm happy to be back and to offer you some more thoughts and perspectives um, to questions that you guys have. And this question that I want to um, address today is, I don't actually have my iPad that's telling me specifically who this question is from because I honestly have gotten this question so many times, it might be the most asked question I get. So the question is, how do you price your artwork? And so I'm going to just offer you my two cents. There's a, there's a few different things I consider when I'm pricing my own artwork. So. Uh, hopefully this will be helpful for you as well. The first thing is to just look at, I'm going to call it the, the market, you know, look at what other artists who are in a similar place that you may be in your career, whether that's just starting off or somewhere in the middle or maybe you've been doing it for a long time, notice what other people are selling their paintings or their similarly sized artwork for, just to kind of feel into and get a sense of like what else is going on out there. The second thing to, to consider is, is really more of a, an intuitive feeling. So, you know, what I like to do is that I'll, I, like, I'll sit with a price, so say $1,000, right? I'll sit with that and just, and just go, is that, does that feel good? Or does it feel like, is my intuition saying, you know, that, that feels like a little bit too much or, oh, that doesn't really feel like enough. And you might imagine how it's going to feel when someone buys the piece for that price. Just to check in with like your own relationship to the work and the value of the work. Um, another thing to consider is, is the size, like I mentioned. So one thing I do with my work is that it's all priced based on size. And so all of my paintings that are, you know, 48 by 48 inches are at a certain price point. All the paintings that are 30 by 30 are a different price point. And that honestly just helps me stay clear and consistent. It takes away that kind of um, emotional connection to like, well, this piece was more important to me or less important to me, and so I'm going to price it higher. Like, to me, there's just like a whole wormhole that opens up when we start to really add in all of these different factors. So I just simplify my pricing structure and, and keep it based on size. So, you know, that works for me. And then the last thing to consider, and this is a big one, is is it selling? You know, you, you maybe you choose that thousand dollar price and then you wait and see, like, does someone, you know, grab it up like the second that you put it out there? Maybe that's your indication that it's priced a little bit too low. Or on the other hand, are you putting that thousand dollar price tag? I'm just using that number as a as an example, putting that price tag on there and then it's not selling and it's not selling and it's been available for years and it's still not selling. That might be your indication of um, it being too high. So you can adjust accordingly. Other things to consider are, you know, where you're selling things. Is it in a coffee shop? Is it in a gallery? Is it off your, in, off your website? Um, I really try to stay consistent with my pricing. Um, I think buyers really appreciate that. You know, if they, if they bought a piece and then they realize, oh, I could have gotten it, you know, it could have been less if it was you know, purchased over here, that doesn't end up feeling very good for the purchaser. So again, this is another way to just keep things simple on your end is just to have your prices and no matter if it's, you know, here or there, your price is the same. Obviously, some galleries and even coffee shops or different places will be taking likely a percentage of your sale um, and that can shift from place to place. I think that's all sort of part of the deal with selling art is that you know, the, the price and the value that you put on the work should remain consistent for your buyers. So lots of things to think of there. Um, also just knowing that as you continue to work and establish yourself as an artist, you know, your prices should gradually increase to reflect um, your experience in the field. So I hope you find this helpful and um, for anyone who is just interested in making art and not selling it, you know, more power to you. This is not a conversation that you even need to visit. I'm, I'm all for people just creating and, and gifting and sharing and, and not necessarily making it a business. But if you are trying to uh, turn your art 
painting career into a business money-making endeavor, then um, I hope you find these little tidbits helpful. Thank you so much, and let me know if you have other questions you'd like me to answer for Hey Flora, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.